So what are we going to see? We're coming up on the Arizona Historical Society where they have 32 lead artifacts inscribed with Latin. They were discovered by a man named Charles Miner in 1924, who was out on a Sunday drive just outside of Tucson. And apparently, they date back to 800, 900 AD. This is really an important, potentially important group of artifacts. If we're able to generate some real hard evidence that proves these things are real, I mean, this is a huge deal. <laughs> It's incredible. Here's a sword sticking out of the ground. Look at it, it's stuck right in there. Yeah. Right in the hill. See, that is so perfect. Is that one of the swords? No, that's a cross. No. Uh, yeah, it's a cross, I think. The one I See, like is the labyrinth. If you find pictures of that. Oh, I think I had some over here. The labyrinth, is that what we're calling it? Or the pizza paddle. <laughs> Whatever you want to call the it. Labyrinth sounds more official. We have, uh, we got to learn more about these two guys right here. Well, they found about 24 pieces, 26, something like that. Charles Monero found the initial ones, then he partnered with Tom Bent. Tom Bent was an attorney, but they were World War I buddies. So who are we meeting today? We're meeting Charles Bent, Thomas Bent's grandson. The grandson, OK. Mr. Ben, how you doing? Oh, I'm just fine. It's nice to meet you. I'm glad to be here. You're a, a grandson of one of the original discoverers. How does this story unfold for you? It was kind of secretive. Secretive? As, yeah, as I was growing up, because they didn't want us to know that we had the our artifacts. So you did you grow up with these? Yes. In the I, house? In the house. Wow. But um, I've been interested in them. And I guess because of my grandfather, he just wanted to know what they were and how they got there. But it was my grandmother that put the kibosh on it. She felt that, I won't say a waste of time, but I think she thought it was a waste of his time. He went through great pains to dig these things out, document how they were encased, and where they were found, how deep. And some of the people say, okay, you found these, that's good. However, these were planted. And he would say, why would somebody plant these things thinking some days these are going to be found? Boy, am I going to pull a big hoax. I think he did think that, OK, these are official. You know, I dug them out. You know, I know what I went through to get these. He just wanted the truth. Wouldn't you think that these academics that are studying this history have these incredible artifacts that suddenly are just thrusting? in front of them. Here, these are the first and only of their kind. Wouldn't you think they'd be all over it? I would think so. I think at times they just don't want to rewrite history, you know? But you know, this whole thing about rewriting history, I've had, I've heard many people say that, well, gee, this work you did rewrites history. You're going to have to rewrite history. Well, you know what my answer is? Well, then rewrite it. My honest opinion is that my grandfather, knowing him like I did, did not plant these or any of this other stuff. I think he truly believed that there's something here. There's something here that needs to be discovered or needs to be found out. Hey, Chuck. Come on in. Great to see you. Thanks for coming. I wouldn't miss this. <laughs> I wanted to tell you in person 
about the results of the testing. This has been something that has been gnawing at me for quite some time. Let me ask you uh, a question. What if it turns out these artifacts are a hoax? It's not going to make me feel good, but at least I will know. Mm -hmm. And then there won't be this question about, well, were they planted? Because if they were, I don't think that it's because my grandfather <laughs> planted them. He found somebody he, he else's found... hoax, if that's what it turns out to right. be. Right. Let me tell you a little bit about what we did, OK? When you took Grant and I out to the site where the artifacts were found, we were able to take a sample of the sand and gravel and the caliche that cemented it together that the artifacts were found in. In the lab, I was able to look at that material. And first of all, the caliche on the artifacts and at the site is the same. The other thing is on the back of the artifacts where we took that sample, we also saw the malachite and the azurite together with the caliche. Well, after doing my analysis, my only conclusion that I could draw is that those minerals in that environment at that place had to have taken hundreds of years to form. So that can only mean one thing. They're genuine. Genuine? They're genuine. Your grandfather was telling the truth. And there's no way that that could have been faked. How old do you think the artifacts are then? Well, one of the artifacts is dated to 800 AD. This would make them 1,200 years old. And what's nice about the work we did is the geology is consistent with that date. One of the questions people asked is, was the AD used at that time? And it turns out it was. I didn't know anything about these artifacts. And to walk into this, to see the artifacts, to be able to test them, to meet you, and to be able to do this today is really an amazing experience. So I'm really excited about that. Oh, I'm sure my grandfather, he's hearing all this. <laughs> and I'm sure he's real, really happy. It feels really good to be able to tell you this. But the thing that's, that's sitting now in, in my head is, who were these people? Who made these artifacts? And where did they come from? And if you remember when we were together with Grant, we were looking at the artifacts. Do you remember that double-barred cross of Lorraine that we talked about? Right. That's really a very important clue as to who these people are. Well, we know that was used by the Templars, and since it was used by the people that made these artifacts, they have to be related, so they were a precursor to the Templars. During the research I did, there was a precursor to the Knights Templar in southern France at that time. At about the 8th and 9th centuries, they were being persecuted, according to some scholars, by some Muslim group coming from the Mediterranean region. And that seems to be the motivation for them to come over here. How would they have gotten over to what's now Arizona? They came by ship, but the exact route we don't know. But make no mistake, since the artifacts are here, they got here. It's like a weight's been taken off. I mean, all these years, not knowing really where they came from, if they were real or not, to be able to sit here and find out that they are actual relics, that my grandfather would be so relieved to know that. I think if your grandfather were alive today, I think he'd be happy that the truth about the relics is finally out. And I'd like to think that he would be happy that modern science was finally able to clear his name. <laughs>